Hello everybody and we are back with round five of the UK Open 2. Just a quick recap on what we've had, what's happened so far. Uh, this is the largest UK regional ever. Oh, two is 77 players. We are in uh, the middle of London. Um, and we are in the middle of our nine round endurance fest. Oh yes. Uh, we've had a fair few kind of interesting decks come up and some very, very fun rounds to watch. Um, at the moment, what we're actually bringing for you is Light Swan, 40 cards, so not the 60 card variant that everybody's used to seeing going all the way up there at YCS's. Um, we do see Orbital Hydrolander coming out here, a very strong boss monster. Yes, most definitely. And against that, it's being piloted by Aaron Henman, and over on the other side, we've got Connor Dilworth, who is running Spirals. And you say that's a stage, basically a standard yes. going second build, As with just seen. a few tweaks. Yep, much like some of the other Spiral lists we've seen. This one is absolutely tech to be able to play second and break through boards. But whether or not it can do that through Orbital Hydrolander, a very strong removal piece with its non-targeting effect, gets around the uh, Sparrow Resort, may cause some problems. Uh, it's probably why it's been doing so well so far. Um, the record for these guys are 3-1. Um, so they're not all XO at the moment, but you know, it's, uh, they've still got a very good record. Now, we should probably head on over to the table as the main event has started. Okay, and they've just started. Photon Thrash has come down. Uh, we've got a charge of the Light Brigade. That was two gold socks and a solo recharge. Mm -hmm. Whiffed a bit on those mills, but he's got a very strong hand here with uh, Thrasher charge, recharge, and a wolf already in hand for discard, and a hydrolander backing it up. So if he can hit some monsters, we'll see that hydrolander coming down, and that will really control the game very effectively. So far we've only made it up to two different monsters in the graveyard, so I'll be hoping to hit some more with the riding effect here. There's a maxi, and there is a droll knockbird. So we've now made it to four different names of effect monsters. At this point, anything that he does to put an additional monster in the grave will allow him to get that Hydrolander onto the board. Oh, and that looks like it's an XC summon of a Minerva. Likely Minerva. Of course, he's hoping to find a Snow here. Oh, and a Wolf. And a Felis. And a Felis. Both That's... will trigger and he'll draw three cards. That is an absolutely fantastic mill there. And with the Lila, he'll now be able to summon the Hydrolander from his hand as well. You see Aaron here has really stacked his deck to make the most of Minerva with Triple Wolf and Triple Felis in the main deck. I think he has more than 10 Light Spawn monsters overall. Yeah, total Charge of upgrade. 11 Light Sworn monsters in the 40 card deck, so more than a quarter of the deck. Charge of the Light Brigade hits two Goblin Bergs and a Photon Thrasher. So he may have just caused himself a little bit of problem there, in that he now has two Goblin Bergs in the grave, which will mean that his Hydrolander effect would be negated if he used it. So to summon, you have to have five unique monsters in the graveyard, and to use the effect, you have to have uh, at least three different monsters in the grave on resolution and none that have the same names. Right. So if he uses the effect and mills a snow for the cost, he will be able to chain that snow effect to sort out his graveyard, but if not, he won't be able to destroy anything with it at all. Okay, so Tough comes down and he's declared monster there, so Felis is gone. And it was a wolf on top of deck. Okay. Super Agent. And link into. Is Dylan he not here? able to. Was it a special summon of the Super Agent? Yes, I'm it was. I'm surprised that he didn't chain the Hydrolander effect just to mill three in case he could change the top card of the deck. Uh, that would have been a great idea. So uh, unfortunately, he didn't go really get. Didn't, didn't has he really already, do it there. He hasn't already used the Hydrolander effect this turn, has he? I don't believe he has. I've not seen. 
it being used at all. Quick fix. Quick fix effect. That's a big red. Okay, the further link summon into another another link. Could yeah, it be no that double is Hydrolander only able to be activated if he has unique monsters in the grave? I, I know that it will only resolve if they're all unique. So you can certainly chain snow effects in the grave to the activation. Just checking the fence uh, for you. So if that's the case, he may have put himself into a terrible position by hitting two goblin bugs there. I still activate and resolve. Okay. So he hasn't missed the Hydrolander, he's just not able to use it. Yeah. Put himself in quite a bad position. He's sent so many cards to grave, but we haven't seen a single fairy tale snow, so he hasn't been able to solve that problem. Here we see what the Spiral deck has been doing all day. If it's uncontested, it will just summon a bunch of stuff and kill you. Do we have any uh, hand traps from Aaron in hand? I don't believe we have anything, but I can't quite see there. Uh, no, it doesn't look like there is one in there. Now, obviously, if the Minerva gets killed, it has an effect that can trigger in the graveyard, so that could shake things up a bit. This is not the start that Aaron was hoping for. Despite what seemed like a perfect opening house. Just as we've seen in previous rounds, Master plan really bringing home the advantage. At this point, it's likely that Connor knows that he's not playing through any hand traps because they would probably have come down on the effect of the spiral double helix. Hmm. So he's probably aware that he's got pretty much free reign to do as he pleases here. I believe he started with the sleeper already in hand, so yep, he'll be going straight for that now. And has the last resort from his opening hand as well. So he'll be able to start destroying multiple cards. He equips the uh, Spiral Mission Assault, is that? Uh, it's very possible. Yep, that would be. Now we've seen a lot of that card being used to uh, summon spiral monsters from the hand, but it is also an equip spell. Just check on what the text is when it's equipped. Uh... What's per turn if your spiral monster controls destroy a monster by battle? Or if you destroy a card on the field with a spiral monster's effect you control, you can draw one card. Okay, so he will have gained the effect there by using the spiral sleeper effect. Mm -hmm. And then it's just you can, if this is sent to the graveyard, especially someone's spiral monster from your hand. Okay. And it does go to the graveyard in the third end phase after activation. Okay, but most of the time the games that we're seeing aren't lasting that long anyway, so no. shouldn't make a great deal of difference here. Connor just hesitating here. Uh, we've seen him destroy the two with the sleeper. Mm -hmm. We haven't yet advanced to the battle phase. I don't believe we have. Okay. And 
Deco Talker is running. How many light spawns are there left? We well, saw the wolf on the top of the deck already. That'll be one free destruction. But which card will he choose to get rid of? What would you choose? Well, the sleeper won't be destroyed because of the effect of last resort. Mm -hmm. So yeah, instead, he's gone for the last resort itself. This would leave the uh, sleeper vulnerable to something like a right gaki, but I don't think we see that in uh, Aaron's main deck. No, he just run Dark Hole on his side, but I'm not going to help him now. Okay. So he'll have summoned the wolf and have that die to the spiral sleeper. It looked like he summoned it in attack position there, but he may have been saying that it would be in defense position just to block one attack. Yeah. Uh, although the life points don't seem to suggest that. The Deco Talker's at 2,800, so that would have done 800 damage over Minerva. And then the Sleeper appears to have done another 700 over the Wolf. Hmm. Perhaps Wolf summons only in attack position. I not believe that it actually I've does. Ever come up again? Because rarely a card that you'd ever want to summon in defense position anyway. This is true. See the Lumina coming down here. Now the Sleeper is still going to be able to interrupt this turn, but it isn't going to be able to do so in the same costless way that it usually would when it's equipped with the last resort. Uh, it's a uh can be summoned in attack or defense position. Okay. So like Lumina just got back. Lumina gets back the uh, Twilight Swarm Lila. Quick fix. Uh, Sleeper effect to destroy banished, the quick yeah. fix and the uh, two lights, one monsters there. Foolish burial. Snow There's will be sent to the graveyard. Not the best situation for snow here. It will be able to block a few attacks, but with the spiral resort on the field, it won't be able to target anything with its effect when it gets summoned. And that spiral cards can't be targeted and Deco Talker can't be put to face down defense position. Yeah, but he's put it in there so that he can start protecting his life points. Yeah, certainly. But uh, protecting life points is one thing, and finding a way back into the game is quite another. I'm not sure what Aaron would need to see here to get that inroad. Spiral player, Connor here seems to have got up to six cards in hand, drawing from the effect of the Spiral Mission. So he has plenty of resources and the ability to continue destroying cards with the Sleeper. As usual, Spiral just devastating. Yeah. Just like game two in the previous match, we see a very strong opening hand failing to deliver. We see a resort here, searching for another last resort. Of course, he was able to shuffle that back into the deck with the effect of the spiral resort. Yep. Spiral is often touted as a deck that can struggle if the first push is interrupted or shut down because they don't have the resources to go again. But in a game that's so slow as this one is right now, they can just use that resort to put things back and slowly recur them over the turns. 
how they can get away with playing just single copies of Last Resort, Master Plan, and naturally the limited Quick Fix and Drone. Hmm. Super Agent. I don't actually think there's anything in um, Aaron's hand that can help. I know he has snow, and he just have a fair few materials for snow. It looks rather like Aaron's deck list is designed around making a push, trying to gain control of the board, and using Hydrolander to keep on top of things. But having failed to get that Hydrolander working in his favour in the early game, he, as we found, he couldn't activate the effect due to having two goblin bergs, he's just slipped from that initial position that he looked like he was going to be in, and I'm not sure that he's got a way back. Hmm. So we'll see Snow coming out here. He'll banish one of his goblin bergs. Or perhaps not. I don't believe he did, no. So he's banished hand traps here. Uh, Note that in his extra deck he has um, the Bujinki Amaterasu. So his Banish Pile becomes a bit of a toolbox for him if he can get there. But at this point he's just trying to block and stay in the game. To be honest, just going to run him out of resources very, very quickly and then find himself just ground down. Mm. Again, the Spiral Mission continues to be drawing cards. And snow will keep itself recurring. Oh, looks like it took that one actually. There's snow. still have two goblin bugs in his graveyard. He should do. Hmm. I'm interested as to why he didn't choose to banish one of those. Uh, I was under the impression that when you're playing an orbital hydrolander, you want to first and foremost banish the monsters from your grave that have multiple copies with the same name. Otherwise you might find himself in a similar position to where he was on the very first turn, unable to activate that effect. Aaron down to 1200 life points. Little Sparrow going in for the big hits. As spies do. And I don't quite see what Aaron's plan is to get back into this game at this point. He still has the snow and resources to summon it, but just summoning a level 4 monster that can't use its effect isn't going to get him anywhere fast. Once more, the effect's coming down. Leaving just enough cards for one more activation as it stands. So or possibly fewer even than that. But with some cards in the hand, he'll be able to supplement those currently in grave. There's uh, Lyle of the Twilight Swarm. Yes. Uh, I can see there's a reinforcement of the army side as well. Or I'm missing that and it's something else. Spiral Mission Rescue. Flips face up. He appears to be activating the effect of Spiral Mission. If he does, he'd trigger the effect of the uh, Twilight Spawn Lila. But he's negated the effect of the Twilight Spawn with the DK Stalker. Yep. Aaron's had enough and they're going to game three. Game two. Game two, sorry. Uh, yeah, Aaron basically didn't really get much to be able to do anything. Mm. Um, Connor able to just do what Spiral do, just fill his board completely, yes. maybe regardless of the hand. Because I, I, to be fair, me and, me and you have had a chat about the hands just before we started that match, and we were saying that Aaron had a fantastic hand because you know he had all, all the resources he could pull together, um, and that Connor's wasn't that great. 
but um, he's taken that hand that we thought wasn't that great and just you know ran with it, was yeah, able absolutely. to clear the board. Uh, I think Aaron was put into a bit of a poor position by the uh, mills that he found, milling so many cards, not hitting a snow and breaking the graveyard for the Hydrolander in the end. Yeah, and in some cases he's not hitting any monsters. Yeah. But that's despite hitting three Lightsworn names with Minerva. Everything really seemed to be lining up for him and then it just all fell apart. I guess that is the nature of such a high variance deck as Light Swans. So what's he going to be siding in? Uh, so we see for Aaron here in the side deck there's Dark Hole, Enemy Controllers, Mistaken Arrest, Twin Twisters, Evenly Matched and Dimensional Barrier. Dimensional Barrier, not a great choice here. Evenly Matched, sometimes a good selection, but the Spiral deck wants to go second and Aaron will probably want to go first, so might not come in. Twin Twisters is able to take care of Resort, but if the Resort is face up, it's limited in what else it can hit, because obviously other Spiral cards couldn't be targeted. Mistaken Arrest, very strong choice. That will shut down the uh, resort and the terraformings. I'm not sure about the enemy controllers. It could be an interesting choice. I suspect it's a, a tech that will have been put in for the likes of Spiral because I'm sure Aaron's expecting to play mostly Spirals. Either that or he really likes Duel Links. Now, I'm just looking over this list here for Aaron. I'm seeing a dark hole in the side deck. Yes. But I don't see a Raigeki anywhere. No, it is a good point. I'm not sure that I agree with that. Um, and over on Connor's hand, I think, see that our hands are just loading in. Um, on the side deck, Twin Twister, Ghost Trick, Jack, Joke Trick, Jack Frost, Chaos Hunter, Floodgate Trap Hole, Magical Springs and Bottomless Trap Hole. So, Aaron's starting again this time, and he's found the mistaken arrest, so he may be able to capitalise on that. Mistaken arrest, gold sarcophagus. But he will be playing into a maxi and a cyframe gear gamma. Mm. So any oh. plays that he does attempt does attempt to make likely to get shut down very quickly. We see the gold sarcophagus being played here from Giant Rex and Maxi instantly coming down. At this point, Aaron has to think very carefully about what his options are. He is possibly able to use mistaken arrest, but I don't believe that will stop cards being drawn. No, I don't believe it does either. Let me know it. One more draw. Aaron has the uh, Drum and Rock Bird in hand. Perhaps he could have tried to use that to limit the number of cards that would get drawn. but instead opting to save it. Not necessarily the wisest decision given that he has the mistaken arrest in hand and there's a fair bit of overlap there with what those cards will shut down. And uh, for the top three cards, there's a seller recharge and a charge. So again, the effect like of Felis here give away yet another draw under this Maxi that really, I think, should have been shut down much faster. Using the effect of Felis to mill three cards here. Destroy the Gamma, but as it would have been banished at the end of the turn anyway, not necessarily getting much value there. Now he may have felt that it was just so important to be able to resolve that Minerva turn one that he wasn't able to play the Drollon Lockbird. And actually, Minerva's effect has the possibility of drawing a card, so it would be an illegal activation after the resolution of a draw on lock bird. Hmm. But I'm still not sure he was correct in giving away quite so many draws there. We've seen Spiral in this position so many times before, with a handful of cards to, well, in this case, a very underwhelming board, but even against the good one, they can be shut down all too quickly. Uh, oh, what's that? Is played there? It's mistaken arrest. It's a quick play spell card. Uh, I believe it's until the end of the next turn. 
Neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand. Nice. <coughs> So it will shut down the terraforming here, but it will also prevent Aaron from using any effects to suit cards from his deck during his turn as well. But depending on the cards that might have been drawn off that max C, there may already be enough there to take the game. I think there was a there was Gofu and a Spiral Gear Drone in the opening hand. Foolish Burial Goods comes down. This is waiting in the graveyard. Uh, typically on turn one you'd expect the spell card, but I think that was also in his opening hand, so he'll have to send a trap. This is Gofu coming out here. Two little flappy tokens. Yep, a free decode talker. And as we've seen in game one, Connor does remember to use the effect of his decode talker, <laughs> so he will be getting better value than some. Going for a Link Spider. Puts himself in a position to potentially summon a Ningosu. Quite why he'd choose that over the decode here, I'm not sure. Go straight for the decode. So he's chosen to put the uh, Link Spider from his extra deck into the graveyard. This may be in order to have extra materials in the grave to return in the end phase. For no, no, he couldn't even use it for the Spiral Resort uh, because it has to return to the main deck. You can't return an extra deck monster. So I'm not sure why he's chosen to get rid of his Link Spider there. Then that is a Soul Charge, a Goblin Berg, and a Max C that he just saw on the top of Aaron's deck there. Okay, so quite likely that Aaron will be drawing a Max C for turn. Very popular to leave your opponent drawing into a hand trap with the effect of Spiral Drone because at that point it's already too late. Pretty much. Although, if he's not able to go off effectively here, he might want to keep that Maxi away from the board. As you see, he might not have access to a second Spiral Monster. Here we see the snow effect being used. Yes. Banishing the Giant Rex, which will return to the field. Activating the effect of snow, targeting the drone. I'm not sure that I would have done that. No? Uh, well, he risks losing the snow if the opponent, if Connor chooses to use the decode effect. Ah, right. Uh, the decode effect isn't used, and the drone ends up face down. That could have been very costly, because I feel if the uh, drone had been tributed, there might have been a distinct lack of resource to resummon that snow. So at this point, I understand we're still under the effect of mistaken arrest. The max C was drawn, so that was chosen as the next card. Raiden is summoned. Mills two cards. Ooh, Soul Charge and Goblinberg. Not really what you want to see, but he also... Not ideal, but it has taken away the information that the Spiral player had about the cards on the top of the deck. Okay. So we are back in a position where there are unknown cards in the mix, and that could result in a miss from a Spiral effect being activated on the next turn. There's a Synchro Summon. Uh, I believe Scarlight is in hand. Oh no, he's summoned Omega. Uh, he is also playing Scarlight, but this time opted for the Omega. Hmm. Omega will help him recur resources from the Banished of Snow. And he'll be looking to banish that Rex again, just because 
hard one for turn effect. He wants to get value recurring it as many times as he can. So he'll be doing so during the opponent's turn and again on his own turn. There's the Jarex. Oh, just to mention uh, for you viewers at home, it's just become incredibly Surprised cold in here. he didn't attack with the uh, Giant Rex first. I don't believe it's able to attack directly. Uh, no, so Giant Rex cannot attack think directly. he might have just given up some damage potential there. Rescue to summon the drone, mm -hmm. regain the information about the top of the deck, and block some damage. I couldn't see what, uh, what he got there. So other than um, potentials like the grass is greener and things like that, what's the advantages of the 40 card deck over the 60? Uh, well, the same advantage that we see in the fact that most decks are choosing to play 40 cards is that you get improved consistency. You're of more course, likely yeah. to draw the cards that you need. Any limited cards that you might be playing, you're more likely to see them. Mm -hmm. It just, the deck should be running in a more streamlined fashion. Yeah. So here we see Aaron choosing to consolidate to the free extra monster zone rather than increasing the attack of the decode talker. Makes a lot of sense. So conversely, why are people playing the 60 card version still? Well, the 60 card version, grass is the payoff there. You have the ability to send 20 cards from your deck to the graveyard, you have one grass and three copies of left arm offerings. If you're able to successfully resolve that grass for a sensible number of cards, anything upwards of probably even 15 cards, you're in a winning position. Unless you get absolutely awful mills, just putting that many cards in the grave will give you some access to tools like Mizuki or um, Snow and plenty of material to banish. See the drone effect coming down. That is again. three wolves. Is that three of the same card? It does appear to be three wolves. Is that? I'm gonna wait for the photo. Yep. That. Oh wait, no, it's not. The middle one is two wolves, and the middle one is an ash blossom. Okay. But that may put Connor in a position where he doesn't want to destroy the Minerva this turn. Oh, are they... Someone's just conceded. Yes, it does look that way. Um, I'm not quite sure which person Connor's conceded. Connor's conceded. Um, so, he's recognised the position that he would be put into if he attacked over the Minerva. A bit surprised that he didn't try and play on. He was still at full life. Yeah. He's, uh, so, uh, that would be Aaron winning game two. Yeah. So, further signing seems to be happening here. It will be interesting to see who plays first in this. Uh, the Spiral deck is obviously geared up to be playing second, but it may see some advantage in being able to make it plays before Lightsworn gets onto the board, and there's a risk of things like Orbital Hydrolander interrupting things. Yes. The temperature has dropped dram drastically in here, but it uh, doesn't seem to have put our players off. We're still uh, quite happily dueling away. We may perhaps see something like evenly matched coming in for Aaron if he expects to be playing second. Uh, and conversely, Connor has the ability to side in four trap holes if he were to choose to go first. Connor's obviously in complete control at this point. 
having lost game two, he'll be able to decide who gets to play first here. First game three of the stream. Yeah, makes a nice change. Yeah. We've had some more interesting decks really failing to perform on stream, despite being undefeated when they go into their rounds. We're just cursing them. Yeah, it does seem that way. Yeah. Okay, so it'll be interesting to see who'll be playing first. Let's wait for the hands to come through. Connor is going first. Okay, so I suspect he will have opted to put in the uh, triple floodgate trap hole and bottomless trap hole that he has side deck. Very strong against the light swan deck. You have the potential to lock out the extra monster zone with a face down Minerva. Two Ash Blossoms, I think that's a Gamma, but I'm not sure. Two Ash Blossoms, a Gamma, a Spiral Resort, and reinforcement of the army for Connor. None of the trap cards, but a selection of hand traps. And for Aaron, we see an Ash Blossom. If the Ash Blossom gets used before a monster hits Connor's side of the field, Aaron's going to be in a very bad position with Gamma. But it seems like he's saving it, often the best move. If you only have one piece of interaction, you want to be saving that Ash Blossom to take out the uh, Spiral Double Helix effect. Particularly in situations like this, where you can get hit by ciphering your Gamma. Oh, we have a drone coming out there. Uh, it's just, we're just getting a photo of... Uh coming up. Okay, the three cards are... Is that a fairy tale snow? A it's wolf? a snow, a wolf, and a propeller. Yeah. So he'll probably put either the Felis or the snow to be drawn to... But sorry, the Felis or the wolf to be drawn to town. Yeah, he's got wolf on top. I thought it looked like a, a hollow card, and I believe that Aaron is playing with common wolf. It may have been the Felis, I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. As I was expecting, the Ash Blossom comes down to negate the effect from the Helix. It's a really critical juncture to have an interruption there, because as soon as the Master Plan hits the board, everything is going the Spiral's way. That is true. The Ash Blossom successfully puts a stop to the turn. So we'll see Aaron getting a chance to play. So yeah, he's milled the Wolf and the Snow, so the Felis must have been added to hand. Interestingly, if Connor had chosen to have the Wolf be drawn and the Felis remain on the top of the deck, it wouldn't get summoned by charge because it's only special summoned if it's sent to grave by a monster effect. Ah. But the wolf does hit the board. And Raiden joins the hand. Now we know that there are still Ash Blossoms in the spiral hand here. But will they be effective at shutting down any of these plays? Now two snows in the grave, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's close burial. We may see an Ash Blossom here. With two in hand, Connor might not want to be stocking up and saving them. No, instead, allows it to go through. Okay, there's Jaren Rex. At this point, Aaron stands to set up a formidable board with a uh, Ujinki Amaterasu. He'll be able to banish a hand trap from his grave and a uh, giant Rex to get loads of value from it here. And there is seven fairy tale snow. Gets rid of the Felis from his hand, knowing that it's not much use there. And I expect to see three of these monsters consolidated for Amaterasu. Summon back one of the banished monsters, and then be able to add back a hand trap during the opponent's turn. A 
Apparently not. No, he seems to be overlaying that to Minerva. Minerva again. It's like it's all about extending his lines of play. And the Ash Blossom comes down. Now he hasn't been able to refill his grave there, so he won't be able to use snow effects on the opponent's turn. Oh. Swings in for some damage. Yeah, it's quite a bit of damage as well. A reasonable amount, but not entirely significant. The most important life point is the last one. Yes. I mean, especially during um, Klee format. Uh, one of my favourite quotes, again, from players, it has been um, life points are a resource, they're only a problem where you don't have any. Absolutely. Now we've only got 40 seconds left on the round. Um, so quite we're gonna... worried that Aaron might have put himself into a poor position here. Now, admittedly, from this seat, we can tell that Fujinki Amaterasu would actually have been punished quite hard because when it attempts to add back the Ash Blossom this turn, the Gamma would come down. Yeah. But as far as Aaron's concerned, I'm not sure that Minerva was the right choice there. Mm. Again, we just see the power of the Spiral deck. Does Aaron have any sort of interaction in his hand for this turn? Or is he entirely at the mercy of the double helix that's about to be causing him problems? It looks like he's pretty much entirely at the mercy of. Because we see the big red coming out here, and that will... see any hand traps or anything? I think he has a snow as one of his cards in hand, I'm not sure about the other. But I understand he had a Lumina, and we haven't seen that yet. yet. So... Yeah, it's a Lumina, a snow, and a third card that I can't see. Oh, it's just two cards. We're in time on the round at this point. Okay, so that's a. Uh, you just saw the hand of the uh, uh, Ben there, just uh, showing them how many how to do end of time procedure. Now Connor here is deciding whether he wants to go for the uh, drone to see the top cards of the deck, or for the double helix. Yeah. Does he currently have knowledge of those top cards? I think he doesn't. Oh no, he can check with the uh, super agent, so yeah. he doesn't need to use the drone to check. And he also got it right, so yes. super agents on the field. And now we see the master plan hitting the board, and everything is going Spiral's way now. If you know, Luke Withington has this sting with Master Plan. It's that um, when you put it in defense position, you have to put it so that its back is facing the bottom of your game mat because then it looks like she's just leaning back on her chair really far. Because <laughs> if she's if you're leaning the other way, she's going to fall out. She doesn't typically stay on the board for too long, so I don't think that will be much of a problem here. So she does fall out of chair. That's what it all is. Well, given that the effect activates when it hits the grave, perhaps falling out of the chair isn't the worst thing to happen. <laughs> so yeah, Borrelow Dragon hitting the board here. You don't need to worry about the mills when you kill the Minerva if you don't kill the Minerva. This is true. Oh, I do like Borrelow Dragon. It seems to be one of those cards where a lot of people kind of criti criticised it to me and said that, oh, they don't think that it's very strong or anything like that, but then you, it's like, it's take a monster. Oh, I, like, uh, I haven't heard much ridiculous. criticism of Borrelow Dragon myself. It, it was back when it was first released. I had a lot of people, especially it was basically during kind of the sneak peek weekend. Oh, okay. You know, when a lot of people take a first glance at a card and they don't really understand exactly what it does. And then, they, and then it kind of, within a week's time, everybody, re, everybody reads it and then goes, oh, wow, why, why, how, did I, uh, how did I miss this? Well, I can assure you that when the set came out, I myself went and bought instantly a Borrelow Dragon, <laughs> three copies of uh, Evenly Matched, a Baguska, and Double Helixes. Such a ridiculously good set. Well, certainly was necessary on release at the time. We had the full power spirals, 
and there wasn't really anything else to compete. As we've seen so many times before, the sleeper's coming down. He has the last resort already in hand. I'm not sure that this is going to be quite 8,000 this turn, but it's going to be an insurmountable board. It is absolutely huge. So he's going to steal that Minerva, use Sleeper's effect. Was the uh, Sleeper effect there used to destroy the set Spiral Mission? I'm not too sure on that, it's very possible. It did just go to the graveyard for seemingly no reason. The Borlo Dragon attacks and takes the Minerva. He, he kind of just said, yeah, go take it. Dodging the effect of when it gets destroyed. The Sleeper effect can't have been used already, because it's being used now. Yep. And swing. And he's doing the math. It'll be 28 plus 2048 plus 19 67. Yeah. And we don't have another 1900 attack point monster in the grave for the spiral trap, do we? Um, I don't believe we do. So we might see Aaron hanging on for one more turn here, but I don't expect much of a comeback if I'm honest. No. As we saw in game it's... one, the deck doesn't function very well when he gets behind. Looking at that board, there is not many ways you're oh, going to get past no, that. We, oh. Here we see in the grave, yep. there was a 1900. The and there we go, and there's the handshake. Uh, let's have a quick talk about that in our post-match discussion. So, well, that was a, a, an interesting match. We got to see kind of a lot of what Lightsworn can do, the 40-card version. And, uh, well, essentially a lot of what Spyro can do, as we've seen pretty much in every round so far. For the third time in five yeah. rounds, we see just why Spyro is the best deck. Yes, absolutely huge board. They, it was just interesting. It was so interesting just to watch the board slowly, slowly just fill up completely with just all sorts of answers to everything that was on the board. Well, all you need is two different, well, any two Spiral monsters with knowledge of the top card of your opponent's deck and you've got your double helix, you found your master plan, and once you've got to that point, everything is set up. You have yeah. the tools that you need, the three card search that you get from master plan really puts you in a position where you can't easily lose that game. It is ridiculous, and I, I feel that um, Aaron was unlucky with some of the some of the mills that was going on for him. I don't think he, I don't think he felt, don't felt like he hit exactly what he would have needed to be able to continue going on. I mean, uh, game two kind of just ended simply because, as we say, Connor conceded yes. at that point. I um, think Aaron might have been quite lucky to do so well as he did in game two. Is, uh, I feel like not using the Drollen Lockbird when he was max seed may have been quite a misplay there. Yeah. Uh, it's it. Yeah, I mean, interesting game. Two very good players um, at this point. Uh, we're getting quite late on, I believe it's getting to around 7 p.m. here. Um, we're only just into round five of four nine. Rounds left yeah, play. we still have four rounds left to play. So we are going to be here for a long time. We have just going to, to time on the main event as well, but I can see that quite a few people are still playing. So we should be able to get an interview through. Um, so we'll be back very, very soon with an interview.